Howdy hun, welcome back to my channel. This is Steph's Got It. And tonight we have a whipping chat on the Victoria Moon's Angel Kid piece that I am reviewing. <clears throat> it's almost halfway. So if you haven't already pulled out your current project, go ahead and pull that out and you can put me on pause. I'll wait for a few seconds till you get set up. There's a shadow right there. <laughs> all right, now that you're all set up, let's go ahead and get to work. If you are new to my channel, I want to say hello and welcome aboard. If you are a regular subscriber, hey girl, how you doing? And guys, and if you are not a subscriber, but a regular watcher or a new watcher, thanks for watching. All right, so let's go ahead and get it started. We are, pull that off. I'm gonna have to stretch this magnet all the way over to the corner and voila. I still love these little chicken minders from KK. That is one of the little baby chicks, isn't it cute? Focus. Isn't that cute? They came in a pack of three or six. I think it was three and I ordered two packs. But anyway, I am still loving those chicken minders. I am, for the most part, just using these two diamond painting pins from Jim's Handmade Diamond Painting Pins. This one is a brand style that he does and this is the newer style style that he does and a special request I requested the penguins and he found them for me and custom made that one for me so as you can see the two ends I can replace these so I can use different tips this one has the new plastic tip and this one has the old metal tips all right does that come out I can't remember no don't think so all right, and I'm using them and not my chicken pen because there were a lot of opportunities to use multi-placers. So I keep a little multi-placers, whoa, <laughs> in the little cup here so that I can switch off as I need to. And currently I am using the three placer and the, I think this is the six placer, I think. Yeah. All right. So now you've been updated on what we're using. How you doing? <laughs> How have you been getting along during this time? Are you pulling your hair out yet? How many diamond paintings have you done? And how long, how long have you been self quarant self, what is it, self-quarantine, self, is that it, self-quarantine? Marty, is that it? Self-isolated. Self-isolated. Self-quarantine, self-isolated, whatever. Um, how many days has it been since you left the house? We left yesterday because for church purposes, we had some things that needed to be taken care of. Um, not that we had church service, but we still had to service uh, some people. And uh, so that was the first time we left in a couple of days. Marty left Friday night for date night to go get us, to go get our pizza and came straight back home. And uh, that was, that was the, I think that's the first time we've been forced to stay home for date night. <laughs> um, because our local theater, well, I think they're still open, but you, well, maybe not now. They, maybe they were last week, but I don't think they're open now. Alabama is closed, has closed everything down. Um, I'm trying to think what colors I want to do. Let me turn on the light. There we go. Um, 
Yeah, so we're, people aren't out. Well, people probably are still out and about, but we shouldn't be for a while. Has everything shut down in your area? I know some people are. Why am I looking at the screen instead of the painting? Oh my gosh. Some people are on lockdown, some areas. Are you in an area that is on lockdown? If you are, tell us, share with us, what are you doing to stay sane? Or, or on the other hand, are you enjoying the break and giving your bodies and your minds an opportunity to take that rest that you're supposed to be taking on a regular basis anyway and letting all your bumps and bruises heal themselves while you just cop a squat on the couch and eat bonbons like Peggy Bundy <laughs> um, where's M? here we go M. last week I wasted I'll tell you no lies <laughs> last week I was having some issues and why is that diamond coming up um anyway and on top of that I think today or last night this poor painting um what is that I uh I think I broke my crown my temporary crown because now that area hurts when I drink something and I can't chew food over there. So needless to say, I'm not a happy camper that the dentist is not open. I understand. I'm just not happy about it. <laughs> um, so that's my current frustration with our current situation. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, I feel better than I did yesterday's on yesterday's recording. <laughs> I was struggling to keep that one light and of course I was feeling really great about an hour ago before I had the frustration of trying to set this camera up in the, um, I'm doing the more of them in the living room now and uh, interrupting poor Marty over there in the corner. But uh, that was very frustrating. And by the time I got it all set up and got some other, I pulled out some other stuff I had available to use to set it up. I was so frustrated. I didn't even want to do the video anymore. I was so tired and frustrated and hot. But we got to get some consistency. Today is supposed to be a video. So suck it up, buttercup. And here we are. Um, what else is happening? Nothing's happening because we can't go anywhere. <laughs> um, let's see. We let the chickens out yesterday out of their pen. Um, let them earn their keep a little more. We've got lots of weeds in the garden and poor Marty's back there trying to pull them up. I suggested we just put the chickens and let the open the chicken door and let them go out there and pull up everything because they will. And that's what we did. So they're like little natural, um, ground tillers or whatever <laughs> they destroy it, the ground actually but we'll get over we'll work with that later since we do above ground uh square foot gardening that's not a really a big deal for us a deal breaker so let them have at it i'm gonna put the multi-placer on the penguins on the flamingos not penguins i'm sorry flamingos you can tell let's see See, there's one right there. Flamingo. 
this that light that's on this camera is really good it, you, let's see there you go turn that off you can see it better aren't those darling there you go love the flamingos all right and lately because I haven't been getting the questions ahead of time or having anything interesting happening in life I have been doing the questionnaire so let's pull that up and pick up where we left off yesterday um, I kind of hate using this questionnaire I like to just naturally have my own topics uh, but lately I just haven't been able to pull them out so to the questionnaire we go um let's see I don't know what that is somebody sent me that link I have to check it out later um Ooh, food storage. Are you guys working on your food storage, by the way? Um, it's a little, it makes these type of situations a little less stressful. I'm trying to turn this light brighter back up. There you go. Is that too, that's too bright. No? Okay. Um, yes, it is. You can't see the colors. Give me a second. We're working on it. There we go. Cause these are these are three different colors, but on the screen they look the same color. Maybe it's just because when I'm the way I'm seeing it on the screen. Alright, so food storage, guys. Seriously. You need to work on your food storage if you don't have any. It helps in situations like this when there is a crisis, um, you can't get to the store uh, because you know people are buying th buying up things. I can't see there's a glare. If you've got your food storage taken care of, then you can be ready to stay home for a couple of months without sweating about it. So what you do, we're advised, at least our church, our prophet advises that, the prophet advises that, uh, I mean, if you don't know, you should know, I've said it plenty of times, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so there are some things you probably know we're big on, and that would be food storage and family history. <laughs> You've probably heard those two things, if nothing else, um, that we are, are big on. And it's at times like this that we can appreciate having been faithful in doing food storage because that's what it's for. Emergencies and times of disaster or even when I was still single, and lost a job, I was able to use my food storage to help feed me and my kids um, until I got the next job. So not only being prepared, that's what it's all about, like a good scout, be prepared, food-wise, but also financial-wise. Dave Ramsey's um, thing is to have a nest egg set apart for emergencies. Um, how many months, Marty? Three is good. Three months. And you don't have to put it all aside at one time, but every payday, you should be putting a couple of dollars aside in an account so that you can have a little money set aside for a rainy day or for such a day as this. Because a lot of people are not able to go to work right now because of this COVID-19 virus and a lot of places are closed so if you 
have prepared, put a little something aside, it might not be as stressful or you at least might be able to weather the storm a little more comfortably for a couple of weeks until things get, you know, if things don't get any better then of course you'll go through that too, but at least you would have been able to maintain for a couple of weeks. So if you don't have it already, get yourself a nice little nest egg that you can take care of your household for three months. And that might take a little time to build, but if you're sweating it right now, I'm sure you can appreciate if you had had three months already set aside that it would be a little less stressful. Um, food storage, same thing. You know, when you buy food on sale, maybe buy two and keep one to eat and put the other one in food storage. If you don't have a lot of space, that's okay. Let's say you're in an apartment and you don't have a lot of space for canned goods. Well, you can put a bunch of canned goods together and put a tablecloth over it and act like it's a tray, a tray table or a, not a tray table, uh, an ottoman or um, a side table. What, Marty? An end table. Yeah. An end table. Um, nightstand. A nightstand. Nobody will know because it's because it's covered with the tablecloth. Set any food, actually, you can shove them under your bed. You can put them in boxes under your bed. Uh, Heck, you could even, if you get enough of them, use it for the bottom of your bed <laughs> and put some height on your bed if you want a taller bed or something like that. Um, but yeah, a good three months and something more than ramen noodles because trust me, if, you don't, if you're not accustomed to eating ramen noodle every day, during a disaster is not the time to figure out you're going to puke if you eat them over five times in a week, right? And don't go out and buy a bunch of stuff that you don't normally eat to put in your food storage. If you don't know what wheat is, if you don't know how to store wheat, most importantly, if you don't know how to cook wheat, don't go out and buy 100 pounds of wheat to put in your food storage. Because guess what? If you didn't know how to cook it before a disaster, you sure as heck can't cook it afterwards. And that's when it's important to, to know how to cook what you have. So just a little PSA. No, yeah, public service announcement. <laughs> I almost thought that was, what's it? Uh, public displays of affection. Public, dis that's PDA. So yes, so a PSA. Work on three month food storage and three months um, financial support so that um, in crises such as this in the future, you will be able to have a little better peace of mind. And if you already have that set, then you go girl or you go boy. Good for you. I'm sure you're not panicking as much, at least about your um, ability to eat and ability to take care of your household for a little while. Um, I know here they are actually not going to be disconnecting people's utilities and things like that during this time, which is amazing. I mean, I, I was shocked to hear it, but I'm glad to hear, it, hear it, that they're not going to bother people during this time because, you know, everybody is out of, out of work, unwillingly out of work or unvolunt what's it, involuntarily? Yeah, involuntarily out of work, so. But nothing beats being prepared because you have a better frame of mind and you're able to focus on other things when you're already prepared for what's happening or what's coming. So, be prepared for the coup of a lifetime. Like Lion King, be prepared. <laughs> Um, now let's go to the questionnaire. I've got that out. And that's an important topic. And if you want to hear more 
about food storage or about um, planning your little three month nest egg or snowballing your debt. I'm not a financial expert, but we have taken da Dave Ramsey. Well, Marty took Dave Ramsey. I read Dave Ramsey. <laughs> and um, and I've always loved budgeting. Oh, I'm good at budgeting, even though I make I let Marty do, <laughs> do it now. <laughs> um, but I used to love to make a budget and I can stick to a budget. I can I can write it out and do exactly what the plan says. And I love budgets. Um, I'm not that fond of his envelope system. I like it, but I wouldn't want to have a bunch of envelopes around with a bunch of money in it. It just seems kind of waiting for something to happen to me. So, um, but it's good like for mad money or grocery money. Um, but I found that I did not like having all my money in those envelopes because, um, well, as I was watching a friend do it and I thought about how much money she had in envelopes carrying around with her or at their home, I thought, wow, if all that was in a fire, what would you do? You'd be out of some serious dough. So I don't like that idea, but if you pay your bills, and do all those things, then I guess you shouldn't have a lot of money in an envelope. I don't know why she had a lot of money in the envelope. I don't remember if they were saving for something big, for a big purchase or something, but I did like it for med money, for gift money, for subscriptions, for the kids' money, uh, allowance money, and things like that. Um, yeah, I did like that. Mm, I think that's all the A's. All right, until we get finished with something else and then we'll spot three more A's. That's how it goes. N. So let's move to N. There's a glare on here. I don't know if it's from the overhead light or if it's from this light on the, I'm gonna turn this light off. And then I'm gonna turn the light pad under here on. Where is it, where is it? Give me a second. I know it's plugged up. Apparently it's not. Ah! It's not hooked up to the light pack. Ah! Give me a second. Give me a second. Um, whoa, it's way under there. Ah. Okay. Hold on, guys. I'm coming. There we go. I've got this tail tucked out of my way so I don't, so I can see my tray under here. There. All right. My glasses are up on the bottom. There we go. Got to put my glasses on to see what's happening on the screen. Can you see that? I'm leaning forward. Um, Y'all should see this setup. I'm using flag poles from our Toastmasters group that we had made. Well, the first one was already made. I made another one. Actually, it looks better with no lights. So let's try that for a second. Oh, this is on low. Okay, let's try low. Um, and Still a glare. I gotta get it up higher. Oh well, we just have to work around it right now. And hopefully my head doesn't bump this mic because I'm extremely close to it. it yep, it's hanging down that far. <laughs> I 
and hopefully you don't hear me breathing like Darth Vader. We went to help somebody and she was getting over strep throat. But she still sounded like she had a cold or whatever. And we almost hugged. We came in to hug because I'm a hugger. And then we halfway I, in the middle of the hug kind of, well, like we were this close to each other with our arms around each other's arm. And I went, whoa, get back, get back. <laughs> but I think. She still may have made me sick. I've been coughing and sneezing. Well, not coughing, but sneezing. I can't tell if that's an M or N. Sneezing and blowing my nose. Great. So we're definitely quarantined over here because I think she gave me her cold. Not intentionally, but it is what it is. And right after this video we're going to eat a very late dinner and i'm going to attempt to make a mask in under an hour if it takes me longer than an hour i have to let it go till tomorrow um so that i don't get my husband sick no i don't think she had coronavirus she had um, strep throat really bad and um, that was a couple of weeks ago she's on the mend but she still has a cold and um, so I'm not stressed about it but I don't want to make my family well my husband our son doesn't doesn't really he just walks he's like a, a, a live-in tenant living here for free he just comes in from work and goes to his room and he comes out and goes to wherever he's going and come back home <laughs> like a young adult he stops and conversates here and there and, um, but you know how young adults are when they're trying to figure it all out and and I'm pretty I'm I'm pretty laid back so like totally my mom was authoritative was an was an authoritative parent so I'm very much the opposite um of course now you push the right buttons and you know it ain't nothing nice but other than that for the most part I'm pretty laid back probably too laid back at times but um I don't like to yell and scream because when I do, I'm I am not often in control, and I have a mean streak. So, wow, not very many ends. Elsa, stop it! Cat scratching the couch. <laughs> um, what was I saying? What was I saying, Marty? Were you listening? Mean streak. Oh yeah, I have a mean streak, so I don't like to, I don't like to uh, fuss and yell. Um, I don't like to argue either. I really don't like to argue. It makes my nerves bad, and it makes my hands shake, makes my everything shake, and. Some people have had the unfortunate mistake of thinking that they had something to do with that. Uh, oh, especially if I cry. No, no, sweetheart. I'm not crying because you hurt my feelings. I'm crying because if I don't choke you in the next five minutes, I feel like I'm going to explode. So <laughs> if you see the tears coming, you, you should back away because then I really have no control. Um, usually, usually, I would try to walk away. But if the person kept at it, then, you know, things progress from there. So I don't like to argue. I don't like to fight. I will, but I don't like to. And I try not to. Oh, but my son is the best, though. He was saying the other day, because he was going to roommate with a guy, and I was like, you know, how are your attitudes? You know, what are you going to do when y'all disagree about something? 
Um, you know, what are your friends like? What are his friends like? You know, y'all going to argue about that or whatever. And he said, no, because I'm just pretty laid back. Like, they'll be going at it and not him and the guy. Well, I assume they have on occasion, but I mean, just in general. And he'll just check out of the argument. He'll be like, okay, okay. And you'll be like, no, but blah, 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 blah. He'll be like, okay, mm hmm okay. And then he's, then that's it. He's done. He doesn't care what you say. He's like done with the argument. And uh, since the guy's like, you're the only person I know who actually does that. So I don't know if he got that from me because his dad will argue in a heartbeat. Um, his natural father will argue in a heartbeat. So I'm assuming he got that from me. <laughs> but I'll argue if you push me. But him, if you keep pushing, he just stop arguing all arguing all. He'll just stop arguing all together. So we don't like confrontation. We will, but we don't like it. And I don't like being that much out of control either. I don't like having my buttons pushed. My husband, on the other hand, bless his sweet soul. And I'm not saying that just because he's sitting over there in the corner. <laughs> but he doesn't argue at all. Like, at all. Like, at all. <laughs> it's like the strangest thing. <laughs> I think I might have pushed this button once or twice, but even then it was, it was a statement and then it was that, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that must be so nice. I wouldn't know, <laughs> but I'm going to assume it's very nice. <laughs> and my nose is running. Ugh. It's a good thing I don't have to go to work or anything because I don't want to. I hate going when I have to keep blowing my nose and sneezing when you're in front of people. And my poor little kids, like one of the last Fridays before they close the schools down, this poor kid, um, I don't know if, I don't know if he sneezed or coughed because I was talking to another kid in the pack and, uh, in the class and Three or four boys just got up and said, no, I'm not sitting by him. I'm not sitting by him. And I said, what are y'all, what, what is going on over here? He got that Corona, that coronavirus. He coughing and sneezing. I said, boys, sit your tail down. You're more likely to get that from um, your family or friends than you are. Um, you're not likely to get that from anybody here course now you might because it is it has hit Alabama but um I don't think I've heard any cases of kids I think someone said something about a kid did Michelle say something about a kid a 16 year old or something 18 year old in the United Kingdom 18 oh that's in the United Kingdom I don't know of any kids here in the states um especially that age um but of course parents need to understand that even if they aren't talking to their kids, their kids are listening. So you can imagine all the crazy crap I hear in my um, scout meetings about politics, about family. <laughs> I mean, even when I was doing primary at church, kids say some things they just shouldn't say <laughs> but to them it's it, it was on their mind and they thought they'd share it much to their family's embarrassment <laughs> and some parents like I just stopped telling the parents because some of them would be so embarrassed because kids see you when you're at your worst because they're your kids they're home with you they see you when you're when you're your at your worst and it may not even be something that you normally do or that's a normal part of your personality. But 
you get angry and lose your temper or something and you do or say something that you normally don't do or say, it stands out in your child's mind because that's not something you normally do or say. And they think it's interesting to share with other people because it was interesting to them. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you have to go whoa 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 stop don't talk about that <laughs> don't repeat that in front of other people I mean nothing like terribly sinful or law breaking or whatever I just mean just something that their parents probably did not want to share with the general population right I gotta take care of my nose one second Ugh. And just because I don't want you to be thinking about it for the rest of the video, here's some hand sanitizer. <laughs> All right. Put a little on the container, clear that back off, and there we go. All right. Elsa, I am not thinking about you right now. All right. So where were we? Um... Hmm. Oh well. Moving along. Oh yeah, kids like that show used to say, kids say the darndest things. Great. Now my ears are stopped up. I can't hear myself. <laughs> um one of the reasons I hate blowing my nose. I hate having my ears stop up. Oh, there's one popped open. Um why was I talking about kids? Hmm. Um, yep, there's an A. I knew it. As soon as we got done with it, it was, there's another one. Mm -hmm. It never ceases to amaze me how you can look over something 50,000 times and still miss it. Of course, these things are so t Oh, sorry about that. That was my head <laughs> um, bumping the camera. Clearly, I, I'm going to have to move that in a different spot so that when I lean forward, I don't bump it. But I like the way, I wish it was a little, I wanna be a little more overhead, so I may have to do a little more adding to this stand to make it work, but pretty good for diamond painting, the paint by numbers, and the uh, planning, playing with means for the uh, planner. I think it will be fine for now. We will work on it. Of course, it seems to be a ever-changing process there. Wish I could just set it up and leave it because setting it up is always, I'm gonna take a picture of it this time, so maybe I'll be able to put it up quicker next time, because we have a general conference at our church on the first weekend in April. So right now I'm sitting in front of the wall where we project it so that we blow it up on the whole wall so we can see it life size almost. So I'm gonna to have to remove all this stuff from this area um, and now that we have the coronavirus um, quarantine issue self quarantining and all that stuff we probably will not have guests over and now that I am pretty sure pretty clear I'm, uh, I've got some germs here we definitely aren't having anybody over because um, I don't want them bringing anything in. And I don't want them taking anything out that they didn't come in with. Um, and then I guess my system will already be low anyway. So, no. We'll just have to wait till the one in the fall. Don't go in my room. You know I don't allow you in there when I'm not in there. Elsa! I don't like her in my sewing room when I'm not in there because she... Okay. 
first of all, I have <laughs> several things of yarn in there. And then I have bolts, bolts of fabric all over the room. And interfaces and stabilizers and all that stuff. Oh great, now the battery is dying because somehow it came became unplugged. Whoa, whoa. Ah. Oh. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, got it. <laughs> This is the most active <laughs> whipping chat I've done. <laughs> um, it it better still be recording. Oh my gosh, are you telling me this whole time I haven't been recording? Yes, it's recording. <laughs> I had it on full screen. Full screen doesn't show you any of the Let's be sure. Yes, it is recording. Okay, so let's go back to full screen. I hate that when it records, it makes that little box. So you have the black part of the screen on the outside. I hate that. So I was hoping if I blew it up to full screen, that maybe, just maybe this time it would fill up the entire screen. This is so dull to look at, but this is, let's see. This is the part of her dress and her dress her dress is white cream color, uh, pastel color. So that's what all this right here is. It's her dress. And if you'll see right there is her head. That's her neck. And that's her head. And that's her afro. It's so cool about that. This is her arm. And I know that because I've already done her feet. And this is the color her feet are. Even though it's not black and it's not brown. It's more like an orange. But when you stand back from it, it does look like a little brown girl. So we're excited about that. And what are we doing? X's. All right. Well, we're almost at an hour. Let's get one questionnaire in because I can't think of anything else to bridge over into. <laughs> um, oh, my spacer moved. I think we were on question 21. Um, let's see, 21, 21, 21. All right. Um, what kind of art do you enjoy? Yep, we did that last night with the uh, Sea Buddies from Diamond Art Club whipping chat. And I think we stopped here. What takes up too much of your time? YouTube. <laughs> YouTube takes up too much of my time. Um... I have decreased in watching because, um, but it still takes up a lot of time and recording these videos was taking a lot of time because, you know, the old camera issues of the camera shutting off every 12 minutes and me having to paste all those pieces together. And this is a little, this camera, this webcam is a little better because it just shoots straight through. I don't have any cutoff issues and I just go in and edit where I need to, except for the whipping chats. I don't edit whipping chats, um, but the other stuff, but it still takes after you edit the video, put your open, your, your um, introduction and your uh, op closing on it and your music and whatever else. Um, I actually have those saved where I can just add them into a into the file and then add the video into that. But it still has to render. And depending on how long the video, I mean the rendering takes almost, like this video is 
the whipping chats are usually an hour. So to render this could, will take an hour on the computer, the editing software to um, not render, but transfer this file from whatever format it is to an MOV format so that it could be downloaded to, to YouTube. The camera used to put them in, I don't remember what the camera's extension was, but this webcam is AVI, dot AVI, and um, that doesn't work for YouTube. So we have to have it turned into a movie, MOV. That takes an hour. Then you have to put your descriptions, all of your tags, um, your uh, index cards, your end screens, all those things. Write up the description, create a thumbnail, work on your thumbnail so that it has the title and all that good stuff in it or is appealing to your audience, hopefully. And once you get all that done, well, actually, first you get it turned into a MOV on your computer. Then you put that, once that starts to load on YouTube, then you can do all the other stuff I just said. And then it basically takes about an hour. If it's an hour long video, it's gonna take an hour for your computer to turn it into the right file format, and then an hour for YouTube to load it. Ideally, you wanna be able to walk away and do other things, but that's when I take the time to do the description and and get all that stuff in. And once that's in, then I can walk away while it finishes. Then, um, I respond to all my comments and I can do that right now because I don't, I'm, I'm not like a huge channel. I'm a very, very, very small fish in the pond. So I can have that personal attention and respond to all of my comments within 20, usually within 24 hours, sometimes within 48 hours, sometimes almost immediately because I have the app buzz me when someone makes a comment. So I try to respond almost immediately, but I do with at least within 24 hours um, because I like interacting with you guys. And I want you to know that I saw what you said and respond to your questions. And I also get emails. And some of you have found me on Instagram, which is listed down below in the description bar. And you've personal, personal messaged me on Instagram. I respond to those immediately. Um, and even though that's, that takes a while as you're doing it, I think the most of my time was wasted on YouTube, watching YouTube, because I want to be supportive of everybody that I like. But after a while, it just got to where I just couldn't. And I hate that. And it's just bad management of time, actually, uh, with all the changes of having gotten the job and gotten more fitness classes and um, mental issues, whatever. So it's just bad management of time. I'm working on it because I do miss watching some of the people that I really enjoy listening to. And another thing about that is because I was not diamond painting as I was listening to everyone. And that's what made it more um, wasteful is because I was just listening to stuff or watching stuff, but not accomplishing anything myself. Watching other people accomplish things, but not accomplishing anything myself. So that's what made YouTube wasteful <laughs> for me. Um, if I'm watching someone or listening to someone mostly, then I should be sitting at a table, either diamond painting or painting by number, or crocheting or doing something so that I too am productive 
productive while I am listening to you or whoever. And then some people are just good storytellers and I just like listening listening to them. I'm one of those people who love to listen to old people talk and tell you all the stories about their past and what happened. I love listening to those stories. So some of you are just really good storytellers or some YouTubers and I just enjoy listening and watching them. Um, and that's okay. Just not all the time. Um, I usually think of it as downtime, but it, the more I talk about it right now, the more I realize, no, it's wasteful time. <laughs> it's get your act together time. <laughs> um, let's see. We're done with that one. Um, we need new beads. We need new drills. Let's pour these out. And actually, we're not going to pour in more. We're going to end this so that we can eat something before it turns into midnight. Another late dinner with the Ladners. Um, let's see. Well, we're coming along. Her, dre her dress is basically done except, well, this area here. But that's just, ooh. These two little parts right here are all that are left of her shoulder that are not uncovered yet. So, woo! And her arm's almost done. I just gotta get her under her arm. So she is coming along nicely. And how long have we been at it? Let's see. Escape. We're at 52 minutes. I think I can call that a good successful hour episode of whipping chat with Steph Scott it so on that we're gonna kind of wrap this up again let me remind you of your homework if you haven't done it already work on your three month food storage and three months of income so that in an emergency such as now, the next one, you will be a little more prepared and be able to rest um, a little easier, at least in the beginning of the next situation to occur. Um, remember, wash your hands, drink lots of water, don't touch your hand or your face. And what was the fourth thing? Wash your hands, don't touch your hands or your face. Drink lots of water, cough in your elbow. If you are sick, don't go visit people. If you are sick, don't let people come visit you. Don't shake anybody's hand and I don't care how big of a hugger you are because I am too. We cannot hug folks. It's a tough world, people. <laughs> we can't be huggers. Um, be safe. Help your family and friends to be safe. You hear my stomach growling? You hear that? Whoa. <laughs> Did you hear it, Marty? No. <laughs> um... Be safe as I touch my face just now. Um, but I'm going to make me a mask. The mask will help me to not touch my face as much and hopefully help so that Marty doesn't catch a cold also. Um, pray for our country because prayer changes things and prayer is always good. If you don't believe that, That is your choice. You have the agency to believe what you will. Um, we're going to call it a night and think about all the things that you 
are thankful for this week. Social distancing doesn't mean disconnect yourself from the world. You still have you you still have YouTube. <laughs> I still have YouTube. <laughs> but you still have phone calls you can make. You still have email. You still have personal messages in Facebook and uh, Instagram. You have FaceTime. You have Skype. You have Google calls. All these things where you can still see each other face to face and still have a connection with each other. Um, we need each other. And let's be positive. When you're searching the gram and putting stuff out there, let's put positive stuff out there. Positive energy, positive thoughts. Um, there's enough negativity and quite honestly, I'm just tired of it. We want to see positive stuff. That's why you're seeing all these crazy um, posts on Facebook asking all these crazy questions that no one was asking before. It's because everybody's tired of reading about the coronavirus. You know, we want to be safe. We want to be up to date, but we don't want to talk about it every five seconds. You know what I mean? So... The next time you post on social media today and tomorrow, make sure it's something positive, something uplifting, and something that will bring a smile to your reader's face. Yeah, that's about it. If you like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, then you're always free to give it a thumbs down, right? You do you, boo. But I hope you would give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to this channel, and I know half of you that watch my channel are not subscribers, I appreciate you watching nonetheless. And let me invite you to click that little notification bell. Well, first of all, click the subscription button. Now that we've clicked the subscription button, then click the little notification bell so that you can choose to be notified anytime that I upload a video on YouTube. If you are a subscriber already, many thank yous. Love you. Um, and if you're a watcher, many thanks and love you. Hope to see you back here. What's today is Monday. Hope to see you back here Wednesday for a whip and chat. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Wednesday will be an unboxing. And I'm going to unbox two. Um, hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do diamond painting. I'm going to do one diamond painting and one something else because um, I have a lot of boxes to open. And uh, we'll do a diamond art club because I'm going to put it on this table so I'll know which one I'm already going to do. So I'll see you back here Wednesday for two unboxings. And with that being said, I'm going to wish you a blessed night, a happy Tuesday, and let's work it together for Hump Day Wednesday. Hump Day Wednesday. Hump Day Wednesday. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. All right. Remember, hun, if you are having a good day, help someone else have a good day. It's the small and simple things in life that make life worth living. Love and shimmies, hun.